Hey guys, sorry for the shaky video today. I didn't plan on filming this, but once I started working on it, I thought it might be helpful to somebody in the future that runs into this problem. So I just threw something together. Um, so we're gonna talk about the uh, FM stereo drifting off on this Marantz 2215B. Um, what would happen is it was fine on the bench. And then when I took it upstairs into my office and let it play on a shelf with a, you know, a shelf above it and the cover on, it would, FM stereo would turn off after a while. And I had a really hard time trying figuring out why. So uh, in this video, I'll show you how I fixed it. All right, guys, I've got a fun one for you today. So I uh, repaired this Marantz 2215B. Had a bunch of problems. The power amp was blown. FM stereo didn't work at all um, due to a previous technician swapping in the wrong multiplex chip and completely butchering the alignment. Um, but there's still some FM stereo issues going on. I didn't notice this until after I finished this and uh, brought it up to my office where I let things kind of burn in for a week or so before I give them back. And I noticed what was happening was, you know, down here on the bench with the cover off, everything was fine. But, you know, up in my office, I have it on a shelf, you know, and there's a, it's not a closed cabinet or anything, but there's another shelf right above it, right? So the temperature is higher in there than it is on the bench. And what was happening is after a while, FM stereo would kind of start flickering and, and go out and um, eventually stop working altogether. Um, now I noticed you you could you could get it to come back if you were to say move the tuning indicator a little bit to the left there. Um, so I don't think there's any issues with the local oscillator. Um, I've been doing a whole a whole bunch of testing and troubleshooting. I think I finally narrowed it down, although I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. Um, so on the schematic, there's this circuit here, and um, and I'm no expert on FM tuners at all. I'm a complete novice. Um, but my understanding is it takes a sampling of the IF signal and um, puts it through this coil, rectifies it, and um, it feeds part of it down here, um, J114 into J115, which goes this H302. My understanding is that the H302 is normally on, which grounds pin um, eight there on the multiplex chip. And when that pin's grounded, FM stereo's off. And when this um, H302 turns off, it allows FM stereo to come on. Um, so anyways, what I've found is, you can see right now we have FM stereo and I've got the meter hooked up to J115, which is linked to J114, that's what they, they have a step in the alignment instructions, um, got them somewhere here, where at the end of the FM alignment, you adjust L107 for the maximum reading, right? And that L107 is what feeds the muting circuit and this circuit that allows FM stereo to come on. So anyways, you'll notice it's about two and a half volts here when FM stereo is working correctly. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to First of all, this is kind of crazy how, how bad this is. All you gotta do is blow on it actually and watch the meter while I blow in some warm air on this um, L107. Um, there we go, it starts dropping. It's actually not as bad as it was earlier, but um, I'll go ahead and I'll put the soldering iron on the case of L107, let it heat up a little and I'll watch, let you watch there, it'll take a minute. So there we go. So once that, once the case of that uh, IF can heats up, starts dropping, and then and there we go. We lost FM stereo. And uh, what I'll do is I'll drip some free spray on it. Let me see if I can get the whole thing in frame here. So you'll see the voltage go up, and then there we go. And there we go. Our stereo is coming back. And once it gets to about 2.25 or so, it stays on. And then if I if I do it again, it slowly starts dropping again. And our FM stereo will cut out. Now here's the problem. You can't get these. If you look at the schematic again, it's it's um it's a kind of coil. It's not an IF transformer from what I can tell, but it's it's kind of similar. Um, 
it's got a capacitor built into it, a silver mica capacitor. And I think that's the problem. Um, I actually had a similar problem with a Marantz uh, 2216B. It was the AM section where one of the IF transformers um, silver mica capacitor and it was shorted or was open, I don't remember, but either way, ended up um, bodging one on the bottom side of the board. Um, I did take this thing out and I checked it on the LCR meter and it's got continuity. Um, it's about five micro henries from that top pin to the bottom pin. The, you know, the center tap has the amount of inductance you would expect and the other side works okay too. Um, you can't really easily remove that capacitor without destroying it to test it on its own. So it's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but I do believe it's the problem. All right, well, I was able to fix it. Uh, it was what I thought it was the capacitor inside this IF transformer. Um, this is not the one that's in there. This is a new one that I had of a different style. I couldn't use it, but there's the capacitor. Um, it was kind of crusty looking on the other one. What I ended up doing is just kind of uh, breaking it apart with a screwdriver. It's made out of glass. And um, I ended up patching in a variable capacitor, 5 to 60 picofarads on the back side. Um, if you look at this, it would have been across the uh, two pins, this pin and the third pin. I'll show you in a second on the back of the unit. Um, and I kind of played around um, adjusting the slug um, until I got the highest kind of voltage combination, well, the highest voltage, and I still had some range on the muting adjustment pot. I didn't want it buried to one end or the other, and I figured that was a good good spot. Um, stereo is working. It's no longer heat sensitive at all. You know, if I, if I drip this freeze spray on there, uh, you shouldn't see really any change in the voltage. Maybe, yeah, it's, it's rock solid now. Um, so anyways, I took that variable cap off the back and I soldered a, um, it actually happened to measure 47 picofarads exactly when I took it out. I figured that sounds like a pretty round value. I don't know if it's correct or not for the circuit. Um, but, you know, the slug is not, it's not really down in there too far, but it's not all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom, so it's a pretty good spot. So I figured that's probably about right, and 47 picofarads is a pretty standard value. Um... So I, I, I got a C0G grade ceramic cap and soldered it on the back. I'll show you here in a second. Let me just set this down. All right, and there it is. Soldered across those two terminals. And uh, like I said, it's, it's rock solid now good to go unfortunately this is not the first time i've seen this it's not it's the first time i've seen it in the fm section um but i'm sure there's going to be more and more of this i guess it's silver mica disease it's just you know on more modern equipment silver mica diseases aren't normally on early 1940s 1950s radios but uh i guess those are a type of silver mica capacitor down in there so anyways i hope this helps somebody um it took me all day to figure out and uh, not much info on the internet, so uh, that's all I got today. Good luck.